Hello, welcome to a short video, uh, an analysis video looking at the impact of uh, indirect taxes imposed by a government on the level of consumer surplus. Quick reminder that an indirect tax is a tax on spending imposed by the government nearly always on the supplier. Uh, the amount of the tax is shown by the vertical distance between the pre and the post tax supply curve. Uh, and basically, because of the tax, the supplier can't supply as much to the market at each price level. So that's clearly going to have an impact on quantity and price in equilibrium. Two good examples of indirect tax. Uh, we're going to focus on a specific tax, but one of the big ones, of course, is VAT. The standard rate of VAT is 20% at the moment in the UK. And excise duty, which is a tax per unit, tax on petrol and diesel uh, per litre. And the, the current excise duty on ultra low diesel is 58 pence per litre. So let's focus on uh, this question in this video. What is the impact of an indirect tax on consumer surplus? Well, a quick reminder of what consumer surplus is. Consumer surplus is the difference between the price that people are willing, able to pay for a product. And that's shown by the position and the elasticity of the demand curve price that people are willing and able to pay, and the total amount they actually do pay, price times the quantity in the market. Uh, a quick reminder of how a specific tax impacts on a market. Uh, the tax per unit is shown by the vertical distance between those two supply curves, pre and post tax. The price as a result of the tax goes up from P1 to P2. So in this situation, the supplier is able to pass on most of the burden of the tax to the consumer, but they have to absorb a little bit the gap between P1 and P3. You see P2, P3 is the total tax per unit. So the government's guaranteed that. The question is who pays it. Now we're going to be looking at consumer surplus. So we're going to be using labelled areas to show the changes in the consumer surplus. So same diagram, except I've just replaced some prices with some labels. A, B, C, D, F, E. Okay, so what happens to, and there's similar questions coming up, and if you want to pause the video at any moment, please feel free to do so, um, and have a go at these series of questions to see if you can check your understanding. First question, what is consumer surplus before the tax? Which area shows consumer surplus before the tax? Have a go. Well, initially, the price is D, and the output is Q1. So the area of consumer surplus before the tax is area A, D, E. Now, the tax increases the price from D to B, and the quantity goes down uh, from Q1 to Q2 as we move up the demand curve from point E to point C. So my next question is, what is consumer surplus after the tax? Have a go. The answer here is area ABC. The price has gone up to B. The area left underneath that demand curve is area A. B, C. Next question, what's the change in consumer surplus? What's been the change contrasting the pre and the post tax situation? What do you think for this one? Well, it's the area, I think I might have jumbled this up a little bit. It's the area B, D, C, E, but actually you probably better say B, D, E, C. I've jumbled up my letters. It's the same area, it's the trapezium B, D, E, C or B, C, E, D, whichever way you want to go around. So, big big point here. If you've got an essay question, an assignment question on taxation, it's your analysis marks will be stronger if you bring in the concept of consumer surplus. The tax has reduced consumer surplus by B, C, E, D because the tax has increased the price and quantity consumed has contracted uh, from Q1 to Q2. We have a, another concept <coughs> which you might want to take into your assignments, uh, into your assignments, the deadweight loss of consumer surplus. This is the loss of consumer surplus, which we know is B, C, E, D, but it's lost and not transferred to government. So two more questions coming up. Which area of consumer surplus goes to the government in tax? Which area of consumer surplus goes to the government in tax? And the answer is area B, C, F, D, that uh, rectangle we, sh we showed at the start of the video, which leaves something called the deadweight loss, just lost because output's contracted and prices are higher. 
So which area of consumer surplus is a deadweight loss? And the answer is area C, E, F. Taxation, indirect taxes, can lead to a deadweight loss of consumer surplus, consumer welfare. <clears throat> of course, much depends on how the government uses the tax revenue generated the area B, C, F, D. Is that, is that revenue, for example, used, dedicated to a particular purpose which might benefit consumers in some way? So there we go. We've looked at the impact of a specific tax in the situation on the level of consumer surplus. Just time to mention our self-paced on-demand student courses. Uh, they're online. I'll post a link in the comments section. I think our courses are a great way, a fantastic way, of increasing your grade potential in the upcoming assignments by improving your exam technique and also improving your key subject knowledge. And also, if you have time, uh, take a moment to showcase our range of printed workbooks and flashcards and other resources. And again, I will post a link in the comments section. These are perfect, I think, for if you have to work remotely ahead of those important mocks and assignments coming up. In the next video, we will look at the impact of indirect taxes on producer surplus.